Welcome out to Hedgesville High School here for EPAC All Access. Spencer Dupuy, Nick Verzellini, and Colin McLaughlin. Happy to have you with us as uh, we're going to break down this Hedgesville Eagle team. And uh, guys, they're four and six last year, but uh, as we've seen so far, the intensity of this practice is like a team that uh, really wants to get a lot of wins this year. Well, I think this is an intriguing Hedgesville Eagles team, uh, known for their physicality. But when you look at Hedgesville, uh, this year, you know, they have their quarterback in Jackson West returning. You have two wide receivers returning that I think could make some plays for them. And Coach Faircloth told us that they're going to open it up. So uh, there's definitely some intrigue around this team. And uh, I'm excited to see what they got. I mean, Hedgesville's known for being a power, power football team. Kyle Whaley, power running back in the backfield, big offensive line. And I'm sure that will still be the focus. But if they're able to mix in a little bit more passing, uh, this could be a dangerous Hedgesville team this year. Yeah, when we talked to Coach Faircloth before, we heard playoff or bust for this team. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear it again today, guys. This team's ready to go. As you said, it's a four-win team last year. They're looking to get a winning record and really keep building this program, which is what we've seen so far from Coach Faircloth at the helm of this Hedgesville team. They have looked very impressive so far from what we've seen from practice, and I'm looking forward to what we get to see come week one against Washington. And, you know, whenever we talk to Coach Faircloth, the kind of mentality of this team, the way that he wants to build this team is alignment assignment football. And you get to a point where everybody knows that. And later on when we talk to a couple of players you know they bring that up without being asked about it and that's just the culture that he's bringing is alignment assignment football going in doing the work that you're supposed to be doing getting to the players getting the line lining up where you're supposed to be and running the play you're supposed to and that seems to be kind of just the way of the way of football here at Hedgesville and I think that they have gotten to the point now where knowing their assignments is becoming easier and easier. Second nature almost. And they're a team that grew with that throughout last season. So this year they're not entering week one not completely knowing what what they're doing, not having a whole lot of confidence in themselves like they might have had um, last year, you know, coming off of no wins and, and just ten points scored. They entered that Washington game and, and really looked like a mess throughout the majority of it had a few decent drives there toward the end, but uh, things just weren't that great for Hedges. I think when they head into that Washington game uh, this time around, it's going to be a much more competitive team, a team that knows what they're doing out there on the field, and they're going to look like more of a complete unit because they're understanding their assignments like Coach Faircloth was looking for them to do last year, and as the year went around, on, uh, they really started to do. Yeah, and when you look at the schedule for this team, they started out next Thursday right here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 against Washington for their annual Thursday night opener against Washington right here at Moo Mall Stadium. Then Friday, September 2nd, they're at Warren County, Virginia. Then on the 9th of September, they're at East Fairmont. They host Morgantown on 918, 923, they're at Martinsburg. Then on 930, they're home against Spring Mills at Musselman on 10-7. They are have a bye on 10-14. They're at Friendship Collegiate Academy in uh, D.C. on 10-21. On 10-28, they're home against Jefferson, and they close out the year on November 4th at home against Hampshire. And, uh, you know, a lot of good teams mixed in there, and obviously the EPAC is what we call, you know, is the EPAC. Uh, it's going to be a challenging schedule for them, but I think they put together a good non-conference schedule to uh, kind of supplement that and, and bring the intensity up on the sides of on the non-conference side. Yeah, each game should be competitive for Hedgesville this coming season, granted maybe one or two, but this team's wanting to compete. I think they're going to be able to do so, especially with that schedule that you just listed off. They're wanting to be at that threshold that we said uh, right there in that playoff hunt and doing so. They're going to have to be right in that middle of the EPAC and be able to beat some teams that they were pretty close to uh, getting competitive with last year and possibly knocking off. We've said a couple times if that Washington game last year was maybe in the middle of the season, things would be different. But again, this year, it's week one, so we'll have to see how this Hedgesville team does against them. 
Yeah, and, you know, the main point of this team was they're building to be a team, and this could be the breakout year. I mean, two years ago they didn't win a game. Now last year they won four games. They went four and six, and this year you expect them to be up in that maybe five to seven to maybe even eight win range. Yeah, I think they could definitely uh, get in that range. Um, but the first goal is to get to five wins, I think, and then six. And then, you know, you go from there. Uh, they are replacing some key guys from last year, like Nathan Albright, who is really their workhorse running back. Kanye Smith. Yeah, a few uh, offensive linemen do depart, but they do have, you know, a good physical uh Top three guys coming back in Eli Faircloth, uh, Levi Faircloth, and uh, well, you move Eli Faircloth yeah. from tight end to the line, so that helps a little bit. And uh, Drew Milton all coming back on the O line, so you know that's a good fundamental piece. And I, we look out at this practice field, and we just see a bunch of big kids, big athletic-looking kids that can uh, definitely. You can tell they've been working in the weight room. So they'll yeah. be a physical team. They'll be a tough team each and every week. And I think that's one of the other main goals is to be competitive uh, no matter who you're playing, which we started to see that toward the end of last year. And I think that could carry over into this year. Yeah, and we get to see uh, leadership-wise in that main quarterback spot, Jackson Ruest, come back for his senior season leading this Hedgesville team. So it'll be exciting to see how much more trust he's been given with this offense if we'll get to see him more air things out and really spread that offense or if Hedgesville is going to keep it same old, same old and really want to work that football right up the middle with the run game. Yeah, well, what we'll do right now is we'll step aside for a quick break. When we come back, we'll be joined by head coach Matt Faircloth. You're tuned in to EPAC All Access on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome back to EPAC All Access here outside Moon Mall Stadium. Spencer Winnick, Verzellini, and Colin McLaughlin. Happy to have you with us. We're now joined by Eagles head coach Matt Faircloth. And, and coach, uh, we talked to you over the summer. We, we obviously got to know you last year a little bit. And, uh, you know, improvement seen on the field last year from the year prior. And now you're uh, really roaring to get even more improvement. Uh, without a doubt. I mean, we had another good off season. Uh, you know, like I said, we're, we got kids out here that want to work. They grind every day. Uh, they put in, they come, they, they they focus on what we need to focus on. We had a tough scrimmage last week against Loudoun Valley that really made us better. We learned a lot about ourselves. So moving forward, I'm excited. What are some of the things that have uh, really shown that the team has grown on? Uh, athletes are starting to develop. Uh, the biggest thing, you know, for us last year, we were big up front, which we're big up front again this year. Uh, but we were very limited in our, what we could do with our athletes. Uh, this off season, they put in the work. Uh, you know, Tanner's, Tanner's grown into a man. Uh, DeMonte Martin stepping in and a couple other athletes that we got on transfers. Uh, future's looking bright. You mentioned those two wide receivers and uh, Hedgesville known, obviously, for power run football. We talked about the big offensive line as well. But, I mean, you guys got some pretty athletic kids there on the outside and a quarterback in Jackson and West with uh, some experience. So can we see more passing from the Eagles this year? No, we're going to open it up. Uh, you know, they they put in the work last year. The biggest thing last year was we wanted, we wanted to establish an identity. What's going to be our identity? And we want to run the football. So last year we went with the offense that, you know, you got to you got to establish the run with the big boys up front in, in that offense. So now, you know, we're moving Eli from uh, tight end to tackle. You know, he, uh, he's up to 300 pounds now at 6'7". So for him, he's, he moves like a tight end. So now we can get into, you know, moving him around a little bit and getting to those second second level guys. So for us, we're going to spread it out and we're going we're going to show some different stuff this year. And when you look at your schedule, you mix in a lot of different teams in there. And you know, obviously the EPAC is the EPAC, uh, but you're going to have a challenge in, uh, you know, when you face uh, Morgantown and then you know having to add in that friendship uh, or that collegiate. I can't remember the name. The one in DC. Pre uh, friendship collegiate. Friendship yep. collegiate. There, yep. you know, we you talked to it, us right? over. It was just backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Or you talked to us about them over the right. summer a little bit when you had to add them to the schedule. I think those are going to be some challenges for you guys. Yeah, I mean, for for us, you know. We, we scrimmage Loudoun Valley, and, and if anybody sees Loudoun Valley right now, 
like they're monstrous up front and they've got they got skilled guys galore down there i mean they brought 75 kids to a scrimmage and Every one of them played. Like, and there wasn't one of them that you looked at and you said, well, that kid don't need to be on varsity. They could play. So for us, going against a team like that, and then this Friday we're at Galax, Virginia. You know, Galax has been 11-time district champions, and they've been in the state title game the last three years. So for us, we're going to take a long bus trip and see what we match up against. And for us, we want to scrimmage hard opponents because when we get to the EPAC, it doesn't get any easier. Week one, you guys get to take on an EPAC opponent in Washington. We talked with uh, Coach Simpson there, and he's really emphasized their uh, lines as well. So what are you looking forward to uh, come week one between your guys' offensive and defensive lines against theirs? Have we matured? Uh, you know, last year, opening kickoff, we fumbled open kickoff. It killed the momentum. Uh, and last year, for us, it was trying to teach kids how to win. They had never won. Well, they got a little taste of that now. So now hopefully we take the next step. We come out prepared. We don't give crazy turnovers up and, you know, do what we do. And, you know, right now we're perfecting what we're trying to do. But, you know, this Friday I think we're going to show what we're all about. Coach, your team goes from no wins to four wins last year. Uh, what would be the goal then for this season? It's playoffs or bust for us. I mean, and that's the seniors. The seniors came forward and, you know, we set goals every year, but the seniors say if we don't make the playoffs, we didn't achieve what we wanted to. So for us, it's playoffs or bust. We're all in and we're going to put all the chips in the middle of the table and see where it goes. And when you look at the EPAC teams around the area, obviously they're going to improve as well. Uh, what is it going to take to uh, have a good, good record and get some big EPAC wins this year? And I say it all the time, alignment assignment football. You know, <laughs> know, your, know your job. Do your job. Uh, rely on the people to your left and right to get their job done. Uh, and, I mean, last year, again, we were young, we, young in certain positions. But at the end of the day, our youth got experience last year, and now all that's coming to the forefront. You know, we we returned some sophomores or freshmen that played for us last year that are going to be sophomores that are playing in key roles for us. We'll have uh, you mic'd up here later on on the show to get a look at uh, what you guys will be doing so far here this practice. What will we uh, be getting to see from your team today? Uh, we start off in specials. Uh, we're, we're really emphasizing our special teams this year. You know, last year was a lot of install offense and defensively. So this year we, we start off with specials and then after that we'll get into our offense and it's go time. Energy right. will be here. Coach Faircloth, thanks for the time. We'll be back for more EPAC All Access next. Stay tuned. A reputation for caring. A legacy of service. At Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations, it's been our story since 1880. A family-owned business, we support the needs and wishes of families. We offer traditional services, as well as many options for cremation, customized remembrances, and pre-planning. Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations retains its family atmosphere and stays true to its roots. Contact us for advanced planning or at your time of loss. We're here when you need us. Welcome back to this edition of EPAC All Access here from Hedgesville Eagles Camp. Spencer Dupuy, Nick Verzellini, and Colin McLaughlin now joined by quarterback Jackson Ruest. And uh, Jackson, last year you guys improved from the year before 4-6, and six, but obviously this year you want to get over that 500 hump and uh, potentially get in the playoffs, right? Yes. Yeah. We are trying to, yeah. What are you looking forward to most this season for the team? Um... I don't – just having fun, going out there, having fun, giving it all we got. Jackson, for you as the quarterback of this team, you know, second year now as the starter, um, what were some things you wanted to work on this off offseason uh, to help you prepare for this year and get over that hump like we talked about? Uh, just a lot of timing and route concepts with my receivers. And for you, you obviously a uh, multi-sport athlete playing basketball and baseball. And this summer you were, you know, playing baseball for post-14 and then you had to come out here uh, during the uh, summer practice period. How was it like uh, balancing between all the sports? Uh, it's definitely not easy. It's not something most people could do, I would say. It's a bit challenging, but you just got to push through it and fight, I guess mentioned during the offseason you've been working a lot with your receivers just bettering the routes and everything what all specifically have you guys uh, been doing so far during training camp that has uh, really built up the chemistry between you and them uh, just throwing a lot of balls uh, to them when they're running just their routes just uh, just them by themselves no defense or anything just getting the timing with me and them anyone really stand out to you in that receiver core uh, I would say definitely DeMonte and Tanner. 
they are they stand out quite a lot to me yeah you mentioned tanner matthew he's another guy that's a three sport athlete so i mean you guys are around each other all the time do you think that helps with your chemistry on the football field yes definitely i think it definitely helps a ton and we talked with Coach Faircloth over the summer during that practice period, and uh, he said you guys as a senior group got together and said that uh, this year it means a lot more to you knowing that you've kind of improved, you've seen the improvement over the last two seasons. Uh, what's your mentality going into this season? Just to do better than last year, really, just end, end how we want the next year to start. And with this season coming up, what are the goals that you have in place? So start with your uh, yourself and then go into the goals that you have set for the team. Um, I just want to be best I can. I don't really want to compete with any other quarterbacks. I just want to do do what I can do and go forward from there. But I just want to. I want our team to at least go 500 or above. I think we're very capable of it. I just think with um, it's just going to take a lot of confidence in ourselves to do it. And then for you, too, I mean, Hedgesville is known for running the ball typically. Uh, and you lose your running back, Nathan Albright, to graduation. But you got Kyle Whaley coming back. He's probably going to take over that role in a big physical offensive line. A lot of guys coming back on uh, that side of the ball. Um, so what, I guess, do you think will be kind of what defines this football team offensively? Um, I think a run game is going to play a big part in it, but also I think a lot of RPOs uh, will help us out a lot because a lot of teams are starting to pack the box against us because of how much we've run in the past. Week one, you guys get to play at home against Washington. What's the game plan going in to get a win? Uh, just beat them, really. I mean, not much to it yet. We haven't done much because we're still preparing for this next scrimmage, but... I guess Monday we'll really find out what our game plan is. Quarterback Jackson Ruest, our guest on EPAC All Access. We'll be back for more next after this break. Stay tuned. Did you know that specialty care is now available in Shepherdstown? At the WB Medicine Shepherdstown Medical Office Building, you have access to more healthcare services and physicians nearby. Cardiology services are offered there through WB Medicine Heart and Vascular Institute, operated by University Health Associates. Other specialty care offered at WB Medicine Shepherdstown includes endocrinology, metabolic health, and two departments of Berkeley Medical Center, Lab, and X-ray. Make an appointment for these specialty care offices at wvumedicine.org. Welcome back to EPAC All Access here down at Hedgesville High School. We're joined by Kyle Whaley returning here this season. And uh, you're going to take in a bigger role this year, obviously, now that it's your senior season. Uh, what's your mentality in heading into the season? Heading into the season, I mean, I go hard at everything I do. You know, just kind of trying to come out 100%, be a leader, lead the team by example. So kind of got that uh, Owen Schmidt type look going on right now with the beard and the mohawk. Are you yeah. going to be a power uh, runner like him upfield? Oh yeah, I'm definitely a power runner. I'm always downhill, so I just shaved my head. So <laughs> I'm ready to go. And Kyle, for you uh, and Hedgesville in general, typically a physical football team, big offensive line returning for you guys. Uh, what are you excited about as a running back running behind those guys? I'm just excited for the holes. I'm excited for the holes and getting downfield. I mean, I love to hit, so that's my favorite thing to do just bang so I'm, I'm really excited for defense too and, and you know looking this year at your team uh, coming in last year four and six improvement from the year prior uh, what what's the uh, the team goals this year so as a team we're we're trying to do better than we did last year so you know make the playoffs <laughs> you know what I mean so we're we're reaching for the stars you know we're going as far as we can you know what are your personal goals personal goals I mean I'm trying to trying to be number one running back in the state I'm going but uh first thing comes first is the team wins you know I don't you know I want to my personal goal is to succeed and you know touchdowns and all that stuff like I want to have the most touchdowns the most yards in the state but I'm looking at the team first so what are some of the things that you've been working on this offseason uh you know gaining weight <laughs> speed getting faster working on my cuts getting upfield so I've been really working on my agility a lot, you know, jukes, spin moves. Who's been helping you with it? Uh, coach Adams. Coach Adams is, he's a tough coach, and, you know, he goes hard, but it makes us better. So. And, Kyle, uh, we talked a lot about offense with Jackson, talked a little bit about offense with you. 
Uh, but defensively, in particular, the linebackers, you guys return a lot at that position. Uh, what have we seen, or what have you seen, I guess, from the defense so far during the offseason? I mean, the defense looks great this year. I'm really excited for the defense. I mean, we are downhill, hard hitters. So that's I'm, – I'm mainly excited for the defense. I love offense and I love defense, but a lot of work goes into the defense on this team and a lot of work goes into the offense. But it's just being physical, and that's that's what I love. So, When you look at your team's schedule, uh, you're going to start get that Thursday night game like you always do. Uh, mm-hmm. what's, your, what's the approach going into that game against Washington? I know last year left a bad taste in your mouth that shut out uh, – Shut out loss for you guys. Yeah, so going into Washington, you know, I want to be 100%. Just go in hard. We need to be physical this year. That's a big thing. We need to know where we're supposed to be, alignment, assignment, you know, everything we need to do. We we need to know where we need to be. So, How's the uh, team as a whole looked coming out here so far? The team looks great, I think. Personally, like our line, it looks awesome this year. So. Anyone uh, stand out to you that's maybe a newcomer or someone that didn't necessarily play a whole lot last year that you think could have a big impact on the team this year? Um, yeah, DeMonte. He's going into his sophomore year. He uh, he stands out a lot. Barely ever drops a ball. He plays our, he plays safety, and he's going to be good this year. So. What's it been like now this year uh, not having to fully worry about COVID compared to the past two seasons? Oh, it's so much better, so much better. Not having to worry about COVID is like a dream come true because that holds us back with practices and getting in the weight room. Yeah, and to kind of piggyback off that, I remember last year when we were talking to Coach Faircloth, and he said just the ability last year for you guys to be together as a team more during the off season. Obviously, when you look at the bigger picture, the overall last year that showed that it, it definitely helped a lot going, you know, going from no wins to, to four wins last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much have has this summer workout? Now you're past the summer, you know, practice period. But how much did you uh, get during that period of time? Like, how much work, teamwork, did you guys get? We were in that. We were in the weight room pretty much every day, just up there working. I mean, it gets hot in there. We don't have we don't have air conditioning. You know, we have one fan. It's like 100 degrees up there, and we're just all in there working. So that was a big thing that coach had emphasized last year. And as you, as a senior leader on this team. Uh, how were you able to maybe get more guys in the weight room? I, I know last year there was a big commitment, but even more so, I would imagine this year guys wanted to be in there after you guys showed some success on the field. Mm-hmm. So getting in the weight room, getting stronger, you can just you can see it on the field. Like when you're when you're in the weight room, getting stronger, you know your max is going up, everything's going up, and you look at the people, for example, that are in there every day, like our leaders that are in there every day, even when you're not supposed to be, you're in there. And you see them on the field, and you just see them bench pressing people off them pretty much, how it translates to the field. And I think that inspires a lot of the younger kids to come through, you know, leading by example. So, Kyle Whaley, our guest here on EPAC All Access. Thanks for the time, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, we'll be back for more EPAC All Access next. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Lauren from Orsini's right here in Martinsburg. Grilling is not just for the boys. We are a platinum Traeger dealer carrying the Pro Series all the way up to the Timberline Series. We have every flavor of wood pellets along with accessories, rubs, sauces, not just Traeger. We carry Utz, Meat Church, Lanes, and Dizzy Pig. We also carry a full line of Yeti products. Orsini's has everything to complete your backyard. Visit us at 360 Hack Wilson Way or at Orsini's.com. Hey, here we go. Look at me. Hey, we're going Hey, going special circuit. Got me? I want Biggs down there with Coach Mason. You're going over dro- uh, drops on kickoff. I want all receivers down here returning. Kickers kicking, long snappers and holders here. Give me DBs and everybody on the gunners. Here we go. Let's fly. Let's roll. Hey, let's go. On the cone. Let's go. X, stay there. Nick Wood, here. Let's go. You remember the drill? Yep. Break down at the end. Let's go. Go. Break down, break down. Chop, chop, chop. Ah, don't over it. Hey, break down. Break down, see it. Hey, break down, Dan. Let's go. On you. There you go. Chop, 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 chop. Don't overemphasize it. Let's go. Keep safe. Stay flat. Look at your color cone. Follow your color cone. Look at the cones, kid. Orange is orange. Orange is orange. Yellow, yellow, green, green. Let's go. 
Hey, Gunners, you're going to drops. You're going over to Gunners. Let's go. Biggs, kick off. Biggs, kick off. You're there. Stay there. Best thing about specials is watching the linemen try to catch kickoff. You're not going back to tight end, so don't ask. Hands team, he can go out there. Don't worry, you ain't going back to tight end. Hey, don't worry, Jackson, that one was on camera. That one's on camera. Where's Grayson at? Hurry up! You loose? Don't come out here and pull a hamstring, then I gotta hear it from the soccer coach. How you snap better on a long one? I don't know. I really don't. I don't either. Hey, you're getting chunky on it. You can hear when you come by, you're getting a lot of grass on the bottom of them cleats, got me? Get that dropper right. All right, go, go again. Scout kick return, let's go! Where are you at, right here? Sure. Roll it over, let's don't roll. Care. We'll, we'll kick bombs. Hey, here we go! Hey, stay in your lanes! We are live until the whistle, my piece in! They got six on the front line. It's all right, gotta get through them. Here we go, ready? I like that, put it out the back of the end zone. We don't need to run down the field. Here we go. Hey, right foot stance, right foot stance. Here we go. Right foot stance. Going lead step. Right foot stance, lead step. Here we go. Set. Go. Good, get back. Here we go. Right foot trail, right foot trail. Here we go. Set. Go. Good, here we go. Left foot, left foot stance. Left foot stance, lead. Left foot stance, lead. Set, go. Good, here we go. Going trail, trail left, here we go. Set, go. Good, good, here we go. Here we go, hey, we're going pass drop, 200. Pass drop, 200. Stay low in it, three, hey. Kick, hey, kick slide, kick slide, here we go. Set, go. Good, get back. Here we go, going to the left, going to the left. Set. Good, here we go, Z hey, zero, zero. Get your depth, get your depth. Set, go. Good, good. Hey, give me centers, centers. I want you back there with Coach Harper working on snaps and that uh, trail block, go. Take, uh, I want you to take guards, work on the trap blocks. Tackles, you're with me, let's go. Guards with Coach Mason. Here we go. All right, hey, I want you and you paired up. Drew, get over here. You and Bart, pair up. Light, Lee, pair up. Steyer, Kelball, pair up. Connor and Cam, pair up. Here we go. Spread out, spread out. Get enough room in between you. Hey, we're working now on that three tech and that four eye tech, that four tech that we're going to see. So step inside. I want you, everybody, I want that three or four eye just inside of you to your right. Got it? This side's defense, this side's offense. When we do this, we got to come down with intent and purpose. We got to wash this out, got me? So when you come out of it, set, go. It's got to be first step here to cut him off. The second step's got to be through his hip and running. Got it? Here we go. Set. Defense, you're going about 50% here. Set. Go. Good, get back. Hey, inside hand has to get inside number, okay? So when I step down, Step here, my second step, on my second step, I'm going to punch here, because I got to get inside, and now I can get that other one on him. Got me? Here we go. One more time, sit. Go! Good, good, get back. Hey, here we go, hey, head up, head up. I want the D defense, head up. Defense, head up. Here we go, hey, we're going outside zone here. Outside zone, I want to trail, log them. Trail, log them. Here we go. Going right. Set. Go. Good. Good. Hey, the biggest thing is when we do it, okay, that first step, that first step's got to be that trail step, right? So when we take that trail step and the rail comes across, boom, second one gets here, 
soon as I get him here, now I can turn him. Got it? One more time. Here we go. Set. Go. Good, good. Here we go. Switch it up. Switch it up. That, stay on the same side. All right, I want it. I want that line over here, defense. I want y'all inside three tech. Inside three tech. Here we go. Working that down block. Here we go. Set. Kill ball. Other side. Set. Go. Ah, where'd your butt go? So now, when you do it, okay, on that, because you're coming out of this, right? He's right here. Set go. I gotta go here. He's gonna he's gonna now get he's gonna get shoulder to shoulder, right? That second one I gotta come up and in. And we call it Peter the Pad. Got me? Peter the Pad. Here we go. Do it again. Set. Go. There you go. Because now, especially if he's bigger than you like he is, if you if I try to stand up here with him, he can drive me. He's longer than me. But if I get in here, he can I can control him. Got me? All right, head up, head up. We're going trail step to the right, trail step to the right. So that first step here, second step here, third step, get my butt to the tree line. Here we go. Left, right, left, butt to the tree line. Set, go. Good, good. One more time, one more time. Set, go. There you go, good job. Hey, break it down, go get a drink, hurry up. Good night. Hear from every EPAC coach every week on the Sports Mix this fall. They really showed that they have a lot of grit. They can play with just about anybody. That's the culture that we've been building here at Washington High. You know, our senior leadership stepped up and said, this playoffs are bust for us. Pretty much the same thing we've been saying since day one. Stay humble, stay hungry. They never solidify some things. I really think the key for our team is the control. They do some things that if we're not ready, they'll be the team that's sitting there at 500 at the end of the night. The Sports Mix, weekdays from 12 to 1 and re-aired from 5 to 6. Welcome back into this final segment here from Hedgesville High School for our EPAC All Access Hedgesville Eagles edition. Spencer Pudnick, Verzellini, and Colin McLaughlin, happy to have you with us. We've now heard from head coach Matt Faircloth, quarterback Jackson Ruest, and running back linebacker Kyle Whaley, and uh, obviously a mic'd up segment from head coach Faircloth. What are your guys' impressions of this team? We'll start with you, Nick. Well, I, I think they're going to be a really solid football team this year. Uh, I think based on what we've seen from practice, things are running a lot more smoothly for this team. And I can remember even when we came to practice last year, they didn't look quite organized as they do this year. So I think there's definitely progress from the team in knowing what they're doing. Uh, the leadership is there on this team. I think both the uh, players that we spoke to are pretty confident in the guys around them. And uh, I think they have a chance to have an exciting football team this year and really get Hedgesville football back toward where they once were. And I think last year was a step in the right direction, but this year could be that step back into the playoffs. Uh, and I think they have some talent to do so. But it's a very tough Eastern Panhandle Athletic Conference to get through. You know, we've said that about every team that we've talked to so far, and we're probably going to say it again about Spring Mills and uh, the other school we haven't done yet, Jefferson. which is Jefferson. We've already done Jefferson, but yeah. not completely. So... You know, we're going to probably say it about those teams, too, because this is a tough conference. There's a lot of question marks. The only team that we know will probably be in the playoffs is Martinsburg. Everybody else is like they can. They have the ability to. There's definitely a good chance, but not all six are going to get in. So it's going to be a real battle throughout this conference. I'm looking forward to it, but I think this Hedgesville team does have a lot of the things that you look for good running game, good wide receivers, and a veteran quarterback. Now mixing in more passing this year yeah. could make them lethal. It could, but we'll have to wait and see and see if they're able to be uh, that completely all-around team that they want to be. Yeah, we've seen a lot of seriousness and a lot more focus from this Hedgesville team at the practice so far. I mean, you can see us right behind right now how focused they are and locked in into everything that they've done. At the start, they had the music on. It was great vibes around here. 
right behind Moomaw Stadium at Hedgesville High. But as soon as those stretches and the music stops, they have been locked in, all practice long, ready to go. And I think that same focus and intensity is going to come week one against Washington. Really looking forward to seeing how this Hedgesville team has grown from year to year and what we can expect this year. As they said, it's playoffs or bust, and I'm on the train of believing them. Yeah, and I mean that just the – you talked to somebody over the phone. We talked to Coach Faircloth on the show over the phone what, in the end of June maybe, early July, and he said that. But those were the first words that came out of his mouth when we were talking about team expectations, playoffs or bust. And to me, when you can back that up by the intensity that we've seen at practice so far today, I think that goes to show that, that they're buying into this and they're really wanting to be in the playoffs this year and make that big jump jump from last year where they had four wins after making a jump from no wins to four wins. Now, I mean, uh, you know, seeing the way they practice, seeing the way that uh, it's kind of they're running the plays, not teaching the plays more, because it seemed like last year, as Nick mentioned, they were kind of doing more teaching than they were actually running plays and things like that and, and install, and now it's more you're kind of ahead of everything where you were last year, and I think you know you could see this team potentially win five, six, seven, heck, even eight wins, depending on how things go uh, you know, against these out-of-state teams. Yeah, we said uh, earlier on the sports mix that we'd love to see three, maybe even four teams out of the EPAC make the postseason there in the final 16 for AAA. Obviously be a lot more work for us to cover all the teams that get in, but out of those, let's say, three, Hedgesville, I think, has a really good shot at being one of them, which means if they're one, what team are we going to see maybe drop out of that? Because we've said the same thing for Musselman, Washington, and Jefferson. We'll probably say the same thing for Spring Mills. Obviously, Martinsburg, most likely a guaranteed one out of the three. So out of the other five schools, they're most likely going to be fighting for two playoff spots. And this Hedgesville team, they just have to knock off the other four, and it's going to be them. Well, and I think this could be seen as a, a conserv- not, uh, not a, a hot take. Uh, you know Martinsburg's 90%, 95 maybe even 100%, probably going to be that number one seat from the EPAC. Number one in the EPAC. But number one in the state. Number one in the state as well. But I don't know how the rest of this conference shakes out. Because you, you can't give number two to Jefferson because you don't know who the quarterback is. Maybe you reevaluate it midseason and see where things are. But honestly, two through six, it's it's so hard to decide who's going to be where. I mean, we haven't seen Spring Mills yet. We haven't seen Jefferson practice yet. But I think it, it, this EPAC has gotten a lot better from where it was last year. And I think it starts with this Hedgesville team that it improved last year. And we're going to see big improvement this year. I think it's because... Every single team's bringing back key roles. Yeah. There's not really been a large senior class that has left to make you question any of these teams. And I would say, too, that none of the teams last year were necessarily pushovers. Uh, record wise, they might not have all been where they expected to be or wanted to be. But even, you know, a three and seven Muscleman team was pretty competitive, had a really tough schedule, and just got hit with a bunch of injuries. Yeah. So it, it's not like you're coming back and like two teams were like one two win teams i mean everybody had some wins last year so we could see a kind of a similar rundown i think though just this year the teams that have that experience coming back uh and while we'll see maybe a third team get in from the epac this year those teams will get those non-conference wins that maybe they didn't get a year ago and that's enough to put them in the playoffs but um it should be fun it should be exciting and i think this Hedgesville team is looking to get back where they once were, and I think they have a chance to do so. So uh, definitely I think Coach Faircloth has this this program in this town excited. Yeah, I think so as well, and we'll get ready to wrap things up here. And, you know, I think you look at that schedule, and, uh, and I think seeing Morgantown on that schedule is going to be a good competition. Friendship Collegiate Academy out of out of D.C. is going to be a good good competition for them. They've got some D1 prospects on that team. And I think this, you know, I think we've been around, around to almost all the teams in the EPAC. I, I think this is could be the best year of EPAC football. Yeah, I think it could be as well. I'm really looking forward to each and every team that we cover. I would plus. tend to agree. I think Hedgesville, like a lot of the schools, too, in this conference, they're not really dodging anybody. Uh, their non-conference games are very tough. So I like that about the EPAC teams, that not only do they know that they have to play each other, 
But they're going to play some tough non-conference teams as well, so they're not going to get any cupcake victories out there. Yeah, and that'll do it for this edition of EPAC All Access. want to thank the Hedgesville staff, Matt Faircloth, for inter talking with us and being mic'd up. want to thank uh, Kyle Whaley along with Jackson Ruess for uh, interviewing with us as well. Uh, for Dylan Bishop, Nick Verzellini, Colin McLaughlin, I'm Spencer Pui saying so long. Tune in to the next edition of EPAC All Access.